Hey, all you cavies. Well, the wife and I did it. We got it together. We got our incubator working, and it's working perfect. It's a fantastic looking incubator. Give you a look at it, open it up, and show you what's going on with it, too. Hang on. All right. Everyone seen it before? Well, there it is right there. But right now, it's, it's on a thermostat. Now, that thermostat will not be the one we're using. We're using a digital one that will keep it within one degree of what, it, what we want it to be. But if you look at it, in the back, You'll see where I went in through with the electrical wire right here for the heat tape. This is a set for the fan, for the speed of the fan. And I was able to keep that active. If you open this right now, I've got the this little heat thing coming in through the door, the thermostat reader. But I'm going to end up making it come in from the back with the final version. If you open it up, look at that, a light, the fan kicking, and it's working good, really good. I'm setting up to 90, see if we can reach it pretty easy. So far, so good. So later on, we're going to be doing our brewmator, and I'll show you what we're doing with that after we test this. I'll get back with you on that. Put it on here when I get it done. Have a good one. Alright guys, thought while we were at it we'd give up an update on our Chinese Water Dragons enclosure that we have. We've really updated it. We're going to be doing a lot more to it. Uh, temperature's right. Humidity is heck to get up to 80 and keep. Uh, we're working on many different ways of doing that. You know, moss, different soils. Uh, we're going to be taking and putting a um, large strip of heat tape under the center to help evaporate the water as it comes up and send it up. Uh, we're going to see what we can do to get it done. If you look at him, he's way over there in the corner. There's a cricket under there and he's trying to get to it. He's been eating really good, really getting on his on his food really well. So we'll see what happens. If you look... Oh, look what we got. A monsoon 400. Yep, that's what we got to try and get this. And it's been helping a little bit. It's not It's not nearly enough. We may have to end up going to a fogger instead of this and use this for another lizard. But for right now, that's what we got. That's what we're trying. Hopefully we can keep them alive. And because they are very, very, very hard to keep alive because of the humidity. That's the major thing with them is the humidity upper respiratory infections so go ahead so take a look inside we got it all set up calcium enriched water in case he doesn't get enough he's over there still staring at that cricket wanting to get that cricket that's underneath that moss he'll get him sooner or later he'll pop out and he'll get him but anyway, I just wanted to show you the update on what's going on with that little guy. And why I add it, I want you to show you my our dead fain beetles. Uh, they're, oh, he's looking up. They're uh, got the blue back. They use the blue to help shade them from the sun. And they secrete that on their bodies and it helps protect them from the sun. Look at him. He's, he's looking at us, checking us out. Yep, he's pretty healthy right now. We just got to make sure we keep him that way. We're trying our best. Okay, guys, we're rehousing our used-to-be babies. Now they're kind of youths, uh, dictators, putting them in their own individual little cages now by themselves. I think they're going to love it. This one's over here. Look how big. For you guys who've been following us from the beginning, you can remember when these guys were little, little bitty. And now, look at them guys. They are big, healthy, cool. We're going to do that to our other ones too, that rehouse them. All right, here's the ad adult scorpions, the emperors that we got from Matthew. Uh, we're rehoming them so we can separate them. They're kind of big. We don't want them to start fighting. But uh, I think they'll be better off in their own little place. 
here's the other one he's bigger than the other one even if you look at his tail he had a wounded tail we thought it was gonna fall off and he might die but it looks like if you look close it looks like it's healing back so hopefully it gets healed and everything is fine with him now here's those death vein beetles I was telling you about they're uh, desert condition bugs they'll eat the waste from scorpions and they do get along with some scorpions don't eat them they'll eat fruits and vegetables they get the water from the fruits and vegetables you see that beautiful blue color on them yep that's what they secrete to keep the sun from burning them up it's like a sunscreen uh, if you were to spray water on top of them it all goes away and they look dark again because it all fades off don't know how long they live but yep here they are got a close-up of one right there they just freeze when you pick them yeah up. they just freeze they act like they're dead <laughs> okay so there they are that's an update on those we're going to be doing an update video here soon on everything and get a close-up of everything we got show you how they're doing but that's it for right now until i get that refrigerator uh running and testing it for the uh, uh brewmater so i'm going to add that here in a little while Here's our Asian forest, one of Matt's that we got from him. He's doing real good in here. Moving him around too. Okay guys, as you remember, we set up our brumation point over here in the kitchen and turn this once cabinet area, that looked like that cabinet area, into our brumation area by putting this refrigerator in. Well what's cool is we're testing it today and we've got a digital thermometer in here a digital control and I've set it at 54 degrees one degree either way and it's working perfectly it's keeping it between 54 and 55 degrees this is fantastic we're gonna let it run the rest of the night to make sure it continues working this way if so we are ready for brumation all right guys a uh, little weird thing at the end of the video here i was at work yesterday the other day and uh got kind of a question for you guys when do you know that you're a reptile fanatic or as my friend trey beck would say oh a reptile junkie when when do you know that well you know that when you're working and i work around wood and you look at a piece of wood like this And what comes across your mind when you look at that? Well, first thing I thought of was a pied ball python. That is something else, isn't it? A piece of wood made me think that. So I know I am a reptile junkie and a fanatic. When a piece of wood in the middle of work suddenly makes me think of a ball, a, a bald pied python. Well, so much for the video. Hope you guys like it. Have a great day, great evening, great life. Talk to you later.